Well, thank you, Dave. Thanks for inviting back and uh, uh, hi to everyone. It's kind of kind of different talking to yourself and you know seeing just a screen in front of me. So uh, you guys bear with me if I have some te te technical difficulties. Uh, uh, Dave will uh, Dave will get me through it. Uh, it is an honor to be here this evening and uh, you, you know just a real joy, I guess. You know, especially what what's going on in the world today to be able to talk football with coaches versus you know, talking to yourself all the time and just uh, speculating, you know, what the future might hold. You know, I, I pray that everyone's safe uh, with you and your family and uh, uh, you're making the most of it regarding spending some quality time with them. I think it's very important, you know, as coaches, sometimes you, you get married between coaching and work and you get married to your work and you get married to football and sometimes uh, your family and the people that are real important uh, take second fiddle. You know, so hopefully you've taken some extra time with them. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to, 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 to talk about this evening. And again, like Dave said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, one is, uh, you know, the makings of why do you call what you call? Okay. And then I want to talk about a couple of 41 checks or what do you do versus 41. Okay. So, so starting off with making a call. Starting off with, with making a call, you know, I, I guess, you know, where it starts off with is where are you at? Are you in the box or are you down in the field? You know, I'm up in the box and I, and I love being up in the box. I've only been down in the field calling on a game one time, one year. Okay, that's when I was in Edmonton and it's just a whole entirely different situation. I think there's a couple of things that you, that you have to uh, consider whether you're upstairs or whether you're down in the box or up in the boxes, you know, what kind of information do you want? You know, what's, what's prevalent uh, for you to make the, to make, to make the call. Uh, and I just kind of like to go through a few things that, uh, uh, that I consider or that I guess shapes me into being prepared for the call. Uh, to, to start off, in all honesty, the hardest call for me to make is the first call of the game. Just because I have no tendencies, I have no feel, I have no idea, you know, and, and I'm not a, uh, I call the game off of guts, you know, the way that I feel, you know. I like to think I get a, a good flow of the game and there's things that I wanna try, there's things that I wanna do, but I'm not, I'm not so much rigid where I'm gonna call this on first and 10 if they're in this part of the field. You know, some people are, um, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not smart enough, you know, when I look at the offensive coordinators and they have that sheet with all those colors and all those things and stuff and all those different, that's, that, that's too much for me. I didn't, I didn't go to an Ivy League school, you know, so uh, uh, I played defense and we try to keep it simple for success, you know, or the old keep it simple, stupid. Okay, so I have up here a couple things I just like to go through regarding making the call and then I'll show you some forms uh, that I surround myself with up in the box to consider. Um, one is, okay, the field zone. Okay, we divide up our field and, you know, there's a win zone. I mean, there's a score zone is when the team is coming up, coming out or backed up. Then you have what we call an alumni field. Okay, and I'll show it to you. <coughs> Where it's in the middle of the field from around 35 yard line to the midfield. And then we have what we call the shot zone when they get into our territory where teams like taking shots going over the top and then the wind zone. And we call it the wind zone because that's where we win football games from the 35 yard, yard line in. And our whole emphasis is to keep them out of the end zone. You know, when they get down into the wind zone, if they get down to the wind zone, we want to, our motto was three, two, one. Okay. Or three, zero, three, what is it? Yeah, three, two, one. You know, we want to give up we want to give up a field goal. You know, basically we want to keep them out of the end zone. You know, so, <clears throat> so does the offense do anything differently or do you do anything differently as a play caller um, very degree regarding where you're at in the field, okay? The other thing is the D and D, down and distance. You know, for our team, we're shaped on down and distance. I, all I want to know is the down and distance and the personnel offensive personnel and then I that's the, that's the most important information for me uh, down a distance and personnel 
then you've got your calls, okay? The other thing that, that's important for me that we'll show you guys is the down and distance regarding PN10, which is the first down of a possession and first and 10. Because a lot of teams, uh, they're different, you know? They might be like, like Calgary. Uh, I was studying Calgary. Uh, on PN10, they're 50-50 run pass, okay? When they get to first and 10, there's 70% pass, 30% run. You know, so that, that, that tells me a lot, okay? Also, uh, what's the personnel in the game? Because some teams pass the ball more out of, uh, out of one back than they do out of two backs, okay? And then the third one I have on here, D&D &D versus, versus Winnipeg, and that's the Tennessee's when we play a team the second and third time is what are their tendencies against our team, okay? Because a lot of times tendencies change regarding who their opponent is. Okay. Then the other thing I, uh, I want to show you guys is, is what my call sheet is and the information that I try to obtain on, on, uh, uh, on, uh, on each down. Um, one of the things that, that we do, James Stanley is my right-hand man, that I think is really important. Within the game, we do a self-scout. Okay? And that's a self-scout regarding what I'm calling man zone, pressure zone versus D&D &D versus... Uh, um, uh, their personnel, you know, and at times on what part of the field. And sometimes I'll make a call just to make a call just to break a tendency. But within the game, we self scout as well as scouting the, our opposition. The other time is what are types of calls are you having? Uh, I have here the purpose is a kill, okay? And that for kill for us is we're playing or anticipating RPO. And instead of playing, you know, 50-50 for our edge guys, he's going straight to the quarterback, you know, taking away and forcing him to run the football. You know, so certain calls are, we're, they're designed to take away something and we're calling them in that situation, you know, but that goes in, in hand regarding, you know, what's the down and distance, what's their personnel, what's the, what's the information that we get during the course of the week is telling us, okay? Uh, the other thing, like I said, we sell scout regarding our coverages. Is it a man zone? Is it pressure man, pressure zone? Okay. The other thing that I think is really important, uh, you know, because it's such a passing league, is that uh, we do a, a, a ball breakdown. Okay. What I mean by a ball breakdown is, is where is the ball going? You know, uh, is it going to the flats? Is it going to the curl? And we chart that, okay, to see you know, are they going after somebody? They're going after a particular person or is it a scheme thing? You know, where they're working strong, where they're working weak. You know, I think sometimes you get a, we all have creatures of habit, you know, and, and, and sometimes it's, it's they're, they're tracking a receiver. You know, they're number one guy, they're moving them around and they're having them a matchup, you know, and that's where the ball's going, you know, wherever he lines up at. You know, so that helps us regarding, uh, what we want to do. And then the last thing regarding here that I have is the intangibles in the game. Uh, the things that you don't see during the course of the week uh, uh, that you can't get to Tennessee off of a team, and that's the weather. You know, is the weather game, you know, here in Saskatchewan, in, in Manitoba, and Winnipeg, you know, the wind plays a big, a big key to it. You know, are they going into the wind or are they going against the wind? Because to me, those are two different games within a game, with the win and against the win, you know? And then the intangibles is, are you going after somebody or are we trying to take care of somebody? So I think all these things that you have to take in mind uh, when, when uh, 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 calling the game. Okay, so. Are you guys still with me? As you move on to the next thing there. I've got a question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, when, when you're talking, you know, you're breaking up your own defensive tendencies. Uh, you use the example of just simply switching up edge play, you know, going from a 50-50 to a kill or to a mesh or mash technique or whatever term a person wants to use. My question is, how often would you do that? Is that a game plan saying, you know, through the course of the week, we want to make sure we do it at least once or twice? Or is that a feel thing? Or is that a specific opponent thing? 
I think it's a game thing. You know, there's there's some things that uh, there's some things that you want to do because I want to see how they react, especially if it's something new. You know, so uh, those kinds of things I'll try to show early. But uh, again, it comes back to um, it's a feel. You know, is this our run defend? Is this our pass defend? You know, do we want to double this guy? Their tendency is 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 on second and, and mediums you know, or second longs, they're trying to move the chains. This is a person that they want to get the ball to. Okay. Does that answer your question, Dave? Yes, coach, it does. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, so here, when I talked about, excuse uh, the, it's not pretty, <laughs> but uh, here when I talked about one of the things that we provide for the players, but I also put it up in the box with me, and this is our field zone, as you can see. Okay, when I talked about our score zone, how it's ba are backed up, this is our score zone from, this, from the one yard line out to the minus 25. And our score zone is what we wanna try to do is uh, uh, hold them from getting a first down. Because now it forces them to punt. They're either going to do what? They're going to take a safety. If they punt, we're in an instant field position. You know, one first down, we're kicking a field goal. So this gives us an opportunity defensively to score points. Okay? No different than the win zone. We keep them out of the end zone. That's where we win football games. I, I mentioned the alumni zone, the shot zone, and then the win zone. So this kind of gives me an overall as far as what they like doing. This, I think this, is a, this might be the gray cup. Uh, Hamilton's tendencies, you know, in our three game, four game breakdown regarding, you know, the run pass situation uh, where they're trying to alumni, they're trying to run the ball a little bit, you know, a little bit more run trying to come out. But when you look at it for the most part, they're pretty consistent, right? Three, th three quarters of the time, the ball is going to be in the air. Then it's just a matter of the type of pass it is, you know, whether it's screen, whether it's RPOs, whether it's uh, play action passes. And that's what we kind of give a journal description. Okay, and this is what we provide for the players also. Okay, so I just kind of have it, I have it, I have it taped to the wall. And just as the game goes on, I just kind of glance out there just to make sure are they staying true to form from what we see coming in the game. Okay. <clears throat> we come back. This is just a basic uh, uh, breakdown regarding uh, down and distance. <clears throat> P and 10, 63% pass. Okay, then all of a sudden, first and 10, 70% pass. You know, so it's, it's enough of a difference that, you know, we, we consider it. For me, all I will look at is what? What's their breakoff point regarding pass and run? You know, so all of a sudden now you get here, second and one to three, they're running the football. So now my calls kind of change a little bit. To me, regardless of where you're at in the field, uh, this is what I look at, okay, the down and distance. Four and greater, it's pass, you know, and that's what we communicate to the players, okay? So they know, you know we're teeing off for the quarterback, okay? Again, this is just, this is part of our scouting report, okay? This is a sheet that I like up in the press box, and we don't give this to the players so much. Uh, this is for me, okay? P and 10, first and 10. And it's breaking down to their run pass regarding their personnel. So we sit up in the box just waiting to see what their, what's the offensive personnel, what's the offensive personnel, and what's their tendencies. So I had kind of have my own little mini scouting report regarding the calls that I want to do versus one back, two back, in this situation, three hoggy, which is an extra offensive lineman in the game. Okay. And then this. Here, okay, this is our original call sheet from the Great Cup game. Okay, and this is what I make my calls off of. Now, over the, over the years, I've used different types of, I guess, call sheets. And I'll show you a couple of different ones that I've used. And I just kind of, <clears throat> when I get up in the press box, I kind of write down three or four defenses, you know, Versus the run. These are run defend. This is RPOs. These are first down pressures that I like. 
because the second down you can run anything. Okay, this is what this is my little game plan within myself that I've thought about and uh, that I want to try to uh, we want to try to implement. So this is kind of our this is all the calls that we had for the Great Cup game. And it's just kind of divided up the the stuff that are yellow, the new stuff that we put in, the stuff that are red. Okay, that's pressures. Those are pressures. Okay, and then our different leopard nickel. These are our different um, uh, different defense personnel. Okay, as a play caller, the thing is, a play caller, we have to make sure is that we're always one step ahead, because we always got to be thinking ahead. We can't be thinking right there in the moment. As soon as you make your call, okay, you. As soon as you make your call, say over eleven. There's nothing I can do about that. I got to think about okay. If it's second and long, what am I looking at calling? What's my personnel group? And if it's second and short, what I'm looking at calling? Just so that 20 seconds goes pretty quick. And especially if you're substituting, those players got to be what? You got to get it to the bench real quick so they can get in and, and think about things. Okay. This was a call sheet. This was a call sheet from uh, <clears throat> when I was in uh, Saskatchewan. And here, it's divided up a little bit more, okay? So now these are our first down, two back calls, two back pressures, one back call, one back pressures, okay? So it's just a matter how, and three back, you know, this particular team, that's what, those were the three main uh, per, offensive personnel groups that they use, okay? And then second and long, you have your pressures, we have our coverages, okay? Short yardage, how we want to contain the quarterback. The quarterback is a, a scrambler, okay? Tiger, our defensive personnel. Okay, so it's kind of kind of split it out. And uh, I guess the thing that I, I look at, you know, we give it to the players like this, and we gave it to the players like this, but I'm not itched in stone because depending on how the course of the game goes, even though two man is a second down call, we'll call two men on first down because if their tendency is a, is to uh, throw on the ball, throw on the ball, throw on the, throw on the ball. Again, you've got to change to what the game is telling you. Your information that you get coming in, it gives you an idea, but at the same time, you've got to call the game. You've got to call the game what you have right now, okay? Um, Is everyone still there? Yeah, we're good, coach. Okay. Like we said, coach, okay. if you have any questions, feel free uh, to put them up into the chat here, especially if we're talking uh, mindset on, on calling the game right now. Go ahead and do that. Okay. So this one here, this last one I'm going to show you. Okay. <clears throat> Is a call sheet that I used when I was with Saskatchewan, okay? And again, very similar to the last one, P and 10, one back, two back, okay? Three back, okay? And one of the things that this one provided, okay, that we put in here, if you look over here, okay, even though it's not filled in, uh, I put some, I will put some score zone defenses in here and then red zone or win zone, okay? So it kind of has, it, it forces me to look prior to the game as far as some calls that I want to put in this area of the field. Okay, and that's just an additional, okay? And then the other thing we also included in this one is our inventory. All the calls that we've had run during the season, okay, but they might not be of high priority in this particular game. Okay, so that's kind of three different ones that I've used over the years, okay, that is three different ones but at the same time, I, I like to think very effective for where I was at, okay? And uh, the players found it very helpful, you know, because we, again, we provided whatever our call sheet was, whatever they get, that's what I got, okay? Now, Coach, when, when you're talking about your own inventory and your own call sheets and things like that, basing it, basing it off of down and distance and, and specifically field position. 
do you take the same approach when scouting the opponent as well? Do you break it into the field zones and, and or is there a specific spot that you look at? Um, yeah, we, yeah, I, I might, I, the two field zones that we'll look at is really the score zone and the win zone. Cause that's where the games are won and lost. Okay. Uh, and the alumni and the yards, you know, cause teams do trick plays. They do everything in the middle of the field. Okay. But we want to know is what do they do when they're backed up and what are they trying to do when they score? Cause there's some, some teams that have real high tendencies. Of, these are the plays that they like running when they get down there, you know, no different than us defensively. Okay. But at the same time, I'm not in a box because Sometimes I'm all over the, all over the map because again, it's how I feel. You know, what are we trying to take away? If if two man's been good for us, you know something, we'll run two man all over the field. You know, sometimes we'll run zone on the five yard line again as a tendency breaker. Okay. I mentioned this is a sheet that I used this year, this past year. Okay, this is the, the Western Final sheet. Okay, but this is the information that I try to get. You know, being very general, uh, I'll put the down and distance, and usually it's just first and 10 and second and long for me. Uh, what the offensive personnel is, this is my call, okay? I'll just circle man and zone uh, formation. It's usually 32, 24, uh, whatever the formation is regarding the receivers. How we label our backfield set, the primary running back, heavy if he's strong, light if he's weak, and then high if he's in the pistol position, okay? I'll check off it's just a runner pass. Sometime I'll put the play in there, okay? And usually if it's an RP, you know, drop back pass, it's, you know, it's pretty relevant, you know? <clears throat> if it's a run, you know, I'll, I'll check and run, and then I wanna know if it's strong or weak. And then sometime I'll write a comment in there. I'll write a comment in there, you know? And this gives me just some immediate, uh, uh, I guess, feedback, you know, so as I'm putting down the call, I look over here and say, oh, gosh, I'm on four mans in a row. I need to get a zone in there, you know, so this kind of gives me accountability as the series is going, as the series is going. Okay. I mentioned James, this is a sheet that he has up there in our, and what he does is he, he makes it a little bit more detailed, okay, and he keeps track of the passes, the first and 10, uh, in between, he'll be talking to me and say, Richie, you know, uh, the last five times uh, on first down, they threw the ball. Okay, they run the ball. Okay, so he, he keeps those numbers in. Uh, 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 he keeps me informed with those numbers. Again, once the game starts, he's making his own scouting report for me because that's what I'm making my calls off of. You know, and being that he's not making the calls, he could be a lot more detailed. And as you can see, uh, you get over there, he lets me know how many mans we run, how many zones we had in the first half on first down. So I might want to change it. You know, I try to be 50-50, you know, to keep them guessing. But all of a sudden, if you're like 70-30, then hold up, we got to kind of even it out, especially if we're getting hurt. But if it's working, hey, keep it going, keep it going. He lets me know regarding the pressure zones, the zeros, and just this kind of information for him. Okay, uh, the thing that we have here is uh, we talked about our passes. This is kind of like what they like doing. Okay, these routes and they, they mean something scissors, spacing, uh, 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 sale. And we see if they're what are they being, being consistent with what they did coming in regarding their tendencies. And again, we want to provide this information to who? To uh, the coaches down on the sidelines who they let the players know. Heck, you still seeing scissors, you know, that's still a big part of their offense on first and 10. Because everyone has tendencies, okay, and we're a creature by habit, okay. And then the last thing here I want to show you guys is our hit chart, okay, and this is where the ball's going, okay. This is from, this is against Calgary, going into the Calgary game. <clears throat> they really like throwing the ball because who's their best receiver, okay. He's usually too weak, okay. Um, who was it? Rogers. Okay, so uh, he got 35 uh, uh, attempts to him. You know, he's running the curl, he's running the flats. You know, so again, what Dame, James does, uh, this is a, a blank sheet, 
And because we have the iPads, which makes it very helpful, he'll check it off. You know, they're working weak and they're working in the middle of the field. They're working curls, they're working curls, they're working outs. You know, sometimes we feel it as we're watching it. Okay, but this just what, this just verifies what we're seeing. And, and for me, I find this very helpful. I find this very helpful. So to me, it's like, it's a lot of information, but it's really not a lot because all it is is just down a distance personnel. Um, and what are they doing out of, out of one back, two back, you know, second and long, the ball's in the air. It's just a matter of now, is it going strong? Is it going weak? Are they going after somebody? You know, uh, do they have a pigeon where they feel that this is a guy that we can, we can work, you know, now, how do we adjust our coverages? How do we adjust to help this player out if he's struggling? Yeah, so that kind of, that kind of gives an overview as far as, you know, how I call the game, uh, how I see things developing. Again, the key thing for me is, you know, that I'm up in the box because I can get all the information that I want to get and I'm not distracted being down on the field. And I see the game overall, not just from a field level. Okay. Now, Coach, with, with this hit chart in particular here, is this something that Coach Stanley would be ticking off during the game to say, hey, these guys are attacking our strong curl to flat area, you know, yes. where we expected they'd be going the weak curl to flat area, and then you would be able to make adjustments. So he, he's taking that off and checking that throughout the game? Yes. Yeah, like I say, it's a, it's a blank sheet. And, and again, the whole thing that we do is we, we have it up there, and then we, we compare it, you know, are they still to stay in true to form? And if they're staying true to form, then, then we have a good indication. All of a sudden now, if they're deviating from that, how are they deviating? You know, all of a sudden is, gosh, there's a lot of balls going strong, you know? So why is it going strong? Is that their game plan, you know? Or if they had some success early, um, is that the reason, you know? But again, again, it gives us some indication as far as what is happening in the game right now. Yeah, I mentioned this earlier, you know, as a play caller, what information do you want? What information do you want up top, okay, that gives you the opportunity to make the call that's best, that gives the players the best opportunity to be successful? You know, and only you know, that that's the information that I want. And those are some of the ways that, that we gather the information during the game. Because what you get during before the game is one thing, but what you get during the game is the most important, you know. Because there's so many there's so many variables, you know. Going against the wind, you know. Going against the wind, uh, teams, you know, you're gonna get run, you're gonna get screens, short passing game. All of a sudden they go with the wind, you know. They might, all of a sudden it might be ninety percent pass. You know, just because they want to what, they, they want to utilize that to their advantage. You know, so that's a within a game. Okay, we good there, coach? Yeah, we're great, coach. Okay. I'm just drawing a blank how I, how I, uh, okay, I want to. Okay, so here the second part of uh, this presentation, I'd like to talk to you guys about 41. Okay, 41 adjustments. Okay, so <clears throat> regarding 41 adjustments, um, I've done a number of them over the years. Um, I know for a, a long time, it really didn't matter what we call, we played it. If we wanted to play quarters, it played quarters. We didn't check. All we did was adjust. Okay, so that's one way you handle 41 adjustments. You know, it, it's, it's easier on the players because they don't have to think about what my responsibilities are. It doesn't change. Okay, really the, one, the only one that changes is really is your weak side halfback. Okay, in this case, he comes over. You know, so when I was in Saskatchewan, one of the things it was, if he was a high player over here, if he came over to this side, he'd still be a high player, okay? If he was a low player over here, he'd come to this side, he'd still be a low player. 
So there wasn't a lot of thinking. He just knew that wherever I'm at, that was my job. Okay, so really, we, it was a play it call. It was a play it call. What I did here was uh, I came up with a couple of different uh, uh, adjustments, you know, that, that we've used. And to be honest with you guys, I was talking to Dave earlier. Um, these are some that we have used in the past, but it's not really what we did last year, just because I don't want to divulge too much information. You know, you know, no, no, don't no telling uh, uh, who's on the other end. You know, might be some green and white people out there. You know that that might use it against us, even though they probably know our checks better than we do. So here, I want to go a couple of checks here. This one we're calling it hot, okay? And it's just a quarters concept. And all hot says you check hot. It's just telling you two halfbacks or low players. You know, so we're going high, low, high, low. Okay, on the back side, <clears throat> we're playing quarters and really it ends up being a loose man. This is our tracks player. So his read is number four. Four runs a diagonal, that's him, okay? He wants to play the post with number three, okay? And the, the shortcomings on this coverage is your strong corner, okay? Because if they run four verticals, technically we have one, two, three deep players. So he becomes a splitter. So he has the midpoint between one and two, okay? And he wants to force what? Farthest throw. He wants to force a farthest throw. So we got four deep and we got four under. He's a low player, curl flat player. He's what we call our rabbit player. So he's going to be pushing through four to three, and he's gonna, the Mac linebacker in this case is gonna be pushing to four, okay? He's a curl dropper or he's taking his, back, his drop off the back, okay? And depending on what the back does, he can help this strong, this weak corner out on any inside routes, okay? Hot's telling us what? Both halfbacks are low, okay? Very simple, okay? Come back to, now we're playing cold, okay? And what Cole is telling us now, the strong corner and the dime <clears throat> or the Sam linebacker are our low defenders. Still a quarters concept, one, two, three, four, okay? But the technique that we're gonna use with this corner is cut and carry, okay? What he's doing is playing like a feather technique. So if technically if they ran four verticals, we have one, two, three, four high players. Therefore, this corner or this halfback isn't playing, he's not, he's not a splitter. He's not splitting, okay? So we're strong against four verticals, but we're weak against what? You're weak against, because you lose an underneath player, okay? If one of these guys runs short, you'll pick up an underneath player, okay? But <clears throat> it's not a guarantee, okay? Max's job doesn't change. Will's job doesn't change. Okay, he's playing number four. Okay, your weak halfback now is playing number three. Okay, so he'll take this one, he'll take three, he'll take two, and he'll take one if they ran four. If they ran him on the out, okay, if they ran number four on the out, he wants to push. Everyone's gonna push a zone. Push, push, he's gonna push. Now we got one, two, three players here taking care of these three, okay? And if depending on what the, 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 the width is, okay, your corner, he's only going to come off if these guys do it, okay? Because he's going to take four and three to the sideline, if that makes sense, okay? Because, again, we want to be able to play what? From our goal line back to the line of scrimmage. So we want to make sure that we're secure with our vertical pushes before we take care of the underneath stuff, okay? Linebackers, really, they're pushing, they're always pushing what? To the first inside receiver to their side, okay? So halfback, hold, I mean, hot, it's a four deep concept, okay? We're strong, we're pretty strong in the underneath, but we can be stretched on the vertical pushes, okay? And then Cole, Cole uh, before you get into your star there, with your quarters concept here, are you, those deep players, are there, are there landmarks uh, based on field landmarks? 
uh, men or, or splitting? Uh, men. You know, we, we, we want to, because we always want to defend the, we always want to defend the formation, never the field. Okay. Because if, if someone's out there in the numbers and my landmark is in numbers, why should I be out there in the numbers? You know, so our relationship is always to the, to the receivers. You know, just like when I sit here, he's got the post of number three. Okay. Again, if we have good eyes, if, if four goes shallow, then he's going to take the next inside vertical. Therefore, everyone can push. Everyone can push. And the thing that we try to do defensively, what you want to do is you want to cheat. Okay. And what you want to do is what? You want to try to squeeze it as much as you can. Okay. So don't, don't cover grass. Don't cover grass. And then the last one here called this star, you know, Dave had mentioned if there's a, when we played Saskatchewan a couple of years ago, we called this, uh, the concept we called Carter. Okay. <clears throat> That's because we want to take away him. This is for their stud receiver. And what we did was <clears throat> we're going to double him. Corner can be aggressive, free safeties over the top, every, how you want to play it. You can bracket him. Okay. Where he's going to play outside and deep routes, he's gonna play inside in deep routes, okay? So if you're playing two over here, then basically all these guys are playing quarters, okay? But he's got the post of four, he's got the post of three, he's got the post of two, and he's cut and carrying. So really it comes out to what? A loose man, a loose man. He runs out, everyone's gotta push, because you see there's no low player here. The corners end up playing what? From high back to low. It's, in, it's unrealistic to have the Mac to push to the sideline to number four. Okay, so he's pushing again to the first inside receiver. Again, the important part of this defense is what? Taking away their stud. Okay, and it's built in. If he comes over here, we just go ahead and play a regular check. It's only if he's on this side that we double. Okay, the other thing you got to keep in mind, if they end up, See if this moves, okay? He ends up being a tight end, okay? Therefore, he's not a vertical threat. Then what you do is you communicate and now everyone pushes right now. He can handle him, he can handle him by himself. Now he's gonna what? Play four, he's gonna play three. He can go ahead and play a true cut. He doesn't have to play cut and carry because now we have one, two, three, four defenders that take care of these four verticals. Does that make sense? Not Dave, does that make sense to you? It, yes, it makes sense to me. And then there's there's another question here for you um, okay. asking about uh, the safety play. So is a safety play, is he drifting based on the quarterback's first look or is he getting over the top and reading the player uh, he's assigned to right away? I, I, think, I think if you want to double him, you know, he goes in and takes his normal alignment and on the snap, he's working this way, or he's, he's lining up on the hash and it's a true double, okay? Because the way that this corner's playing it, right? He's playing as though he's gonna get help now. It's not, I'll get help after someone does this. This is a double, ever, how you, ever what you put your rules in, okay? Right now, we put him robber to number one. So he's looking for the dig post. So he'll be under the route, He'll be on top of the route, okay? And what we want to do is when we play star, we want to force him to throw the ball over here, okay? And this guy can be aggressive. We want him to be aggressive because he knows he has, he has help. He has help, okay? The other way, the other way, and I didn't draw it up here, Dave, the other way that you can play a type of star is now you do it with the, the linebacker, okay? Now he's going to help on under routes, Okay, he's gonna push to the curl. He's gonna push right now. He's gonna be outside and on top. Now your free safety is what? Now he's pushing to the field. Now you can take one of these guys and make him a low player. So it goes back to the guessing game back and forth. You're gonna double this guy, but are we gonna double with the linebacker or am I gonna double with him with a DB? And if you're robbing from Peter, you gotta play Paul. So you're just playing yin yang going back and forth. Okay, and it gives what it does, it gives the quarterback a different look, it gives them a different read. Okay.
Okay. So here I like to show you guys you know some film. Uh, bear with me with regarding some of it, Dave. If it gets real uh, choppy, just let me know. Whoops. Full screen. Okay. So this first one, we're playing hot. Okay. So we talk about hot. Okay. This is our strong halfback. He's going to be a low player. He's going to be a low player. As you can see, one, two, three, four. Those are my four deep players. He's got four. He's running the diagonal. He should take that. He should continue to get depth. And technically speaking, in this play, he should be outside of number four. Okay, or at least head up on him instead of the linebacker. Okay, but we know this. He's a low player. He's a low player. Okay, hot again, hot again. Telling him he's a low player, like him to be more outside. The halfback is low. My four high players, one, two, three, four. They run screen. <clears throat> we can be aggressive and play over the top. Again, the whole thing I want to show you out of this is just what's his job? He's a low player. He's a low player. And this is the third one. Okay, same thing, he's low, it makes him high. Okay, these are just, really this is your Mac and your will. Okay, don't worry about the personnel grouping. That's your Mac, that's your will, that's your weak halfback. He's a low player. Your four high players are one, two, three, four. Okay, now we're playing cold. Okay, now we're playing cold. Okay, so we said in cold what? The corner's gonna be low, the dime's gonna be low. Okay, and he's coming across. Okay, and what we're telling him to do in this particular situation when we run cold, okay, is he's gonna read number four. If four is vertical, I'm gonna take him. If four goes short, I'm gonna be a low player. Okay. And really, when you look at it, all we're doing is playing cut to the field, okay? Free safety needs to be over here. He should be around the, 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 the brick sign. Because if, if three runs up the field, that's his play. Okay, and all he's doing is reading four. He's just reading four, okay? Doesn't change the linebackers. He's a high player. Linebacker's gonna play through the curl to the flat. He's our widest underneath player weak. We have cold again. Okay, he's reading four. He's reading four. This is a good job. Free safety's got some width. He's got the diagonal. He's a cut and carry guy. The dime's low. He has a new number two. He's going to stay inside, and we're in good shape. We have an extra linebacker in this particular situation because we're playing a 30 front. But conceptually, it's still the same thing on this side. I know there's a lot of Ryder fans out there, but that was a good defense call right there. That was a, that was a great defensive call. I don't know who made that call, but that was a great call. Okay, in this one, it's a five-man pressure. Okay, we're bringing five, but what we're doing in the secondary is still the same, okay? He's reflecting number four. Four stays in, I become a low player. He takes the diagonal because that's the diagonal of number three. 
He's got number two. He's a cut and carry, so he stays out on number one. Okay, because of what we're doing here, he's running with the, it's really like he's locked up man on the weak side. Dave, that's two good calls in a row. Okay, this one conceptually is the same thing. What happens here on this play, okay, if you look over here, he ends up becoming the weak halfback, okay? This is a free safety and all they end up doing is exchanging responsibilities, okay? So <clears throat> he runs a low route, so he stays low. He should be pushing, he should be pushing to the field because he's gotta be concerned regarding number three. Okay, there's our dime, our sign line, Sam linebacker, he's pushing out. Okay, you're cutting carry. Okay, he's playing in between, and he's playing two. We get out leveraged by our linebacker here. So he, the free safety here should squeeze back. He should squeeze back, he should squeeze back. So the key thing is, what do you have him doing? What's, what's his rules, okay? And what we wanna do is we always wanna what? Be able to take away the vertical pushes. We cap backs coming inside, okay? All they're doing is playing cut out here, okay? He's reading number four, four stays in, I stay low. Free safety jumps at, okay? That's just a drop, it's a good job by the offense, find the hole. We're driving on the other two routes, the two dig routes. Okay, we're playing cold here. Okay, and this one, free safety is way out of position. They're in 41. Because technically what, he's got to reflect number three. If number three runs straight up the field, that's his job. Okay, because we're cutting carry out on number one, okay. He's supposed to number two, okay? He's supposed to number three. And the weak halfback is what? He's reading number four. Four is low, I'm low. And what saves us here is just because of the route combination, okay? You got two low routes here, okay? He's gotta see the wheel route. Corner's gotta see the wheel route. He should, he should take the wheel and the halfback should take the post. Gotta have good eyes. He drives off the quarterback. Last one went cold here. Oh, we saw this. Okay. Same concept. Four stays in. He stays low. This linebacker should be pushing the other direction. He should be taking the dig right here. Okay. Quarterback, he was greedy. He was greedy. He's got that wide open. Okay, that's his responsibility. Again, the thing that we want to do is we want we want depth, but there's a such thing that you could be too deep where you don't help nobody. Okay, in this case, he's too deep. Okay, because that's his responsibility. Now, coach, I want I just want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly there. Four staying low. So you want that weak half there. He's got the, the pink tape on his shoes. He's yeah. staying low, and the high player behind him should be taking that uh, dig, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. That, that way, that way, because technically his alignment, he should be over here, okay, because he's assuming that he's coming over here. That way, because it looks like man, right? I'm reflecting here. I'm reflecting. His position's over here. He's by himself, okay? We're saying that you don't need no help, okay? You're gonna get help by, it. this is a five-man pressure, okay? Or if it was a four-man pressure, you're gonna get help from the linebacker that's gonna be pushed into the curl, okay? And, and that's, Dave, that makes the rules simple, okay? When he comes over, because really all these guys are playing is cut, okay? So he comes over, I'm reading four. If four goes vertical, he has nothing to do with four. Okay, if four stays low, then I stay low. If four goes out, that's a low route, then I stay low. 
Okay, because these guys are still playing those three. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, coach. Okay. Okay, so now these next ones are, they're star, okay? We're gonna play star, okay? So, because we're not, I'm saying that we're playing star, okay, regarding the concept, okay? So I want you to visualize here, okay? They're still playing, we're playing zone here, okay? But the star concept is, these two are gonna be on this one, okay? Therefore, you got one, two, three, four high players that are reflecting these four players, okay? So he should be reflecting number four, and you kind of go back. If he runs a diagonal, I take four. If four sits low, then I can sit low. Because really when it comes back to what? These guys are like loose man, like loose man. The four runs out, I want to keep pushing. I want to push everybody. Okay. The important part of this when we talk about star is what? We want to take this away. We want to take him away. We want to double him. Now we're not doubling him. We're we're still playing just straight zone, but that's the concept regarding these two taking care of this one. And you can see how how it plays out. He should come off of that. Okay, he's pushing, he's pushing a little bit too much depth, but he's playing the, the sticks, right? Second and 17, second and 17. He should be more to the field. He should be more to the field. We have plenty of help over here. We have plenty of help over here. Okay, the whole thing is when you talk about adjusting the 41s, okay, is what's the opposition doing? What do you want to take away? What do you want to take away? Okay, this is star. Again, these two are on him. As you can see, he's taking care of number four. That's the diagonal. This is our halfback. This is our dime, our sand linebacker. He should be taking care of the post of three. Okay, that's a good play here. He comes underneath, okay? He becomes a low defender. He becomes the high defender because he's a cut and carry guy. Because what we tell you when you're cut and carry, because you're playing these two guys, okay, as long as number two is vertical, I just stay with one. Just make it simple rules. As long as two is vertical, I stay with one. And that's what he does. You know, he becomes a 70-30 player, but he's not running a corner route. Okay, he's just trying to clear out. Okay, but again, if we were, if this was the true star, we'd be doubling. We'd be doubling. Number one week. Same concept. Again, because of his split and what he's doing in star, go ahead and make a push call. He goes ahead and takes him. Now your high defender can push everyone over. Now he's not wasted. So we end up wasting two guys over here. Okay. And again, the route combination, but it enables us to what not cover grass. Now, Coach, where's, where's kind of your cutoff point for, for that split in the one into the boundary there? This play, he's lined up right on the numbers. Is that kind of your cutoff point, or, or is it game? I think when he's coming down, yeah. When he's no longer creates separation, you know, you, we just tell him, go ahead and lock him, because now he's running. I don't see him coming down that far to run back outside, but you still have a high player. He just knows that he's still he can still be aggressive. He can still be aggressive, okay? And it's it's now, how can we help this side out, okay, with an extra player? Because there's no need in him going over to the numbers and, and covering, okay? Come back to the hash and, and, and look for work. Same concept. Let's stay with the same concept, 41. So now you get that. Okay, very similar. Instead of motioning down there, Dave, he lines up in the tight end. So go ahead. I'm locked up here. Now everyone can push here. I'll take number four on the diagonal. Does that make sense? Okay, because now in a perfect world, 
If everyone pushes, he can be a low defender. He doesn't have to worry about cut and carry because we have one, two, three, four are high defenders taking care of one, two, three, four. Okay. They get us on this one. Okay. Okay. Because you see two people go with the diagonal. And that's why communication is so important, right? Because of the split, him coming down, then he should take this one. He should be sitting in the middle of the field. And guess what comes to him? So Marcus Sales, he should be sitting right here. Okay. And that's a that's a no play for that's a no play for Calgary. Okay. But because we have a lack of communication, okay, even though we're playing straight zone, again, we don't want to cover grass. And we end up having two guys, which is unnecessary. Explosion play is a big play. Okay. And this last play here, okay, again, we're playing star. He's over the top. His read is number four. His read is number four. He could be aggressive with that. Okay. And even though we didn't have it in this game, but this is one of those receivers, this is a Darrell Walker that we would double, that we would double, okay? I think him and Speedy Banks are the two best receivers in the league right now. So that kind of gives you a couple of things that you can do with 41. You know, to me, the key thing is it starts off with what are they doing? Because you don't want to defend ghosts, okay? What are they doing, you know? Is it better to play hold over there where you play hot, or is it better to play um, – um, cold you know or you can man up one and two and then play 10 on 10 you know so it's just a matter of it's just a matter of what do you want to do as a defense okay and what are you trying to take away that the offense is doing so that gives you you know a couple of adjustments that you can make uh, versus 41 the other thing you know what we try to do again is try to keep it simple you know with all that motion because uh, we're always going to defend the final set. Okay, we're always going to defend the spot, final set. So I can't tell you how they get to 41, okay? But we want to make the 41 check as simple as possible. And that's why I say one of the ways that you can get around that is the weak halfback just comes over there and he's playing four. Everyone else just plays whatever the defense is called. You know, that, that's a simple way to start now. That's a simple way to start now. Okay. That's fantastic, Coach. That, appreciate that, that. Pardon me? I said, that's fantastic. I appreciate the, appreciate the info. Coaches, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and get them in the chat. Or you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask them uh, personally. But uh, as we wait to see if a couple of those come up, Coach, I got, I got a couple for you. Is um, when, when you're talking that star coverage, I know the film may not have been exactly what we were talking about, but if, if you were doing it, um, how often would you ask that corner or give him the freedom to go ahead and be aggressive and press it, knowing that he has uh, help over the top? I would say I give him a, a lot of freedom. You know, I think sometimes you want to look at D&D, &D, you know, where they're at in the field. And I, and I think one of the things that you might want to do, because um, a lot of times when you walk up and press, uh, the receiver's conversion is to run the fade. Okay, so you might want to press outside in, take away the outside and funnel him to your free safety. You know, I mean, it, that, that's an idea. That's an idea. But the free safety has got to know if he's going to play outside shade. You don't want to so much get over the top over here because he's giving up the inside. You still want to play what? You still want to play dig to post. You, want, you, you, you as a free safety want to play inside to out. And then the, the second part to that is, 
is just in general, when, when teams go four by one, what, what do you feel is the biggest problem or issue they present uh, offensively or, or what causes the defense the most problems? Is it route I think, is I, think it I, th I think when a team goes 40, 41 on you, it forces you to really have to defend the field. You know, because defensively, all we're trying to do with the ball, the, the field is 65 yards wide, and we're trying to always just shrink the field, shrink the field, shrink the field, okay? And all of a sudden, you put four to one side. Offensively, it's unbalanced, okay? So we're unbalanced, you know? So therefore, we got to cover more of the field than what we really want to cover, okay? And depending on who your number one receiver is, is on the weak side is, how do we give that guy some help? You know, do we... Do we concentrate on the four receiver side or do we concentrate on the one receiver side? You know, so I think it gives you some problems depending on who that guy is. And then again, there's only so much they can do to that four receiver side, but what they do is it forces you to, to adjust over there. Cause there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room weak. You know, one of the things that teams are doing now too is they're going 14. Okay, so they're going one by four. Okay, now that creates some different problems because now there's a lot of space out here. Okay, but at the same time now, there's not much space. And there's only so much you can do with four into the boundary because now that works against you. You know, and I think your alignment, it's easier for your free safety to help this guy out when it's a 14 set, okay, versus if it was a 41 set. Just because it was... His, his normal alignment is what, usually two yards outside the tackle. Okay. But again, it's how you get to it. You start off in a 41 and you motion to a 14. That makes us, that's scary. Cause that, 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 that's, that's some adjusting. That's some adjusting. Cause you don't see that a lot. You don't see it a lot, you know? And a lot of times teams do it when the ball's in the middle of the field, you know? But then again, the strong tendencies for teams in the CFL is that when the ball's in the middle of the field, you usually play man. So it really doesn't make a difference in that manner. It's your zones. It's your zones that it causes problems to cover four. I mean, a uh, four to one side. You know, the other thing too, Dave, is, you know, I'm not a, I think there's, there's, there's some argument that goes with, we're gonna play whatever the call is and make it simple and have one guy adjust versus on all of our zones, you check to one defense. Because offenses are very smart. And if they know what your check is, you, you're still gonna have to have something to come back with. You know, because now they know, they know what your rules are and now they can, they can dictate. You know, they can be aggressive. You know, versus you having a couple of different things. And that's one of the things that, that we have to do because we see a lot of 41 sets. You know, that we have to have some, some variations to, to at least make them think a little bit. Okay. We've got another question popping up here in the chat. It's asking, uh, if the running back leaves in motion weak during the cadence, does the will take a man-to-man -man in star? Yes. Yes. That's, that he does. But he also knows this, okay? Even though they were doubling over there, he knows he has body presence of a free safety where it looks like it's three on two. So he knows this, that he's not by himself. Okay, he's not by himself. No, I, I like how you, uh, how you presented this, you know, it's quite simple, especially with the concept of just bringing the weak half over, making it, you know, that the coverage stays the same with your hot and your cold and, and different things like that. You know, a lot of teams, you've heard of C coverages and stuff like that, man, the one guy and you're still playing whatever coverage you called, you know, different things like that. So there's a bunch of different ways to do it. But in, in my experience, a lot of times the simplest way is the best way until you get that done. Yeah, and, and, and enables the guys to play fast. You know, the, the other thing that I forgot to mention, uh, Dave, excuse me, when we talked about 41 set, okay, we talked about it in regards to, excuse me, in regards to four true receivers, okay? 
if they put it back out here, you know, and they go empty 42, then that stays the same, okay? So if we were in star, and they were, they came out in this, there wouldn't be a 41, there wouldn't be a 41 check, okay? Because it was what? There's not one receipt over here. When I look at this, that's really a 32 set, okay? As far as how we align with the DBs, because then that forces what? The Mac linebacker to come out, and now you play your coverage. You, you play your coverage, you know? So if you're playing whole cut, nothing changes. If you're playing quarters, nothing changes. Instead of your Mac pushing to his drop, he's already lined up in his drop because he's, re, he's reflecting his man. That's who controls him as a running back. Okay, so, so when you talk about four to a side, for us, it's important to know what four offensive players are to that side. Is it a, is it a running back or are they four true receivers? Because you're only going to get the half back if it's what? Four true receivers. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, that's real good, Coach. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just taking one last look to see if there's another question. Doesn't look like there is. Okay. Uh, so uh, appreciate your time tonight, Coach Hall. Uh, really like the information you shared with us. Uh, and again, you know, I, I, I do want to express uh, – uh, being grateful not only to you, but the rest of the coaches that have really jumped on board and been a part of this, especially during this elongated uh, off season. So everyone's willing to pitch in and, and share some information and get better together. And, and, and that's real important if you ask me. So uh, again, thank you for doing that. And uh, we'll be back here uh, again tomorrow night with another coach hall. Uh, it'll be coach Ryan Hall coming on uh, tomorrow night. So uh, see you all again, coaches and coach Hall. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. Appreciate it, Dave. You guys take care of yourself. See you soon.